In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise, and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The word of the Lord is found recorded in the book of the prophet Ezra, the tenth chapter, beginning at the first verse. While Ezra prayed and made confession, weeping and casting himself down before the house of God, a very great assembly of men, women, and children gathered to him out of Israel, for the people wept bitterly. And Shechaniah, the son of Jehiel, of the sons of Elam, addressed Ezra, We have broken faith with our God and have married foreign women from the peoples of the land. But even now there is hope for Israel in spite of this. Therefore let us make a covenant with our God and put away all these wives and their children, according to the counsel of my Lord, and of those who tremble at the commandment of our God, and let it be done according to the law. Arise, for it is your task, and we are with you. Be strong and do it. Then Ezra arose and made the leading priests and Levites and all Israel take oath that they would do as had been said. So they took the oath. When Ezra withdrew from before the house of God and went to the chamber of Jehoanan, the son of Eliashib, where he spent the night, neither eating bread nor drinking water, for he was mourning over the faithlessness of the exiles. And a proclamation was made throughout Judah and Jerusalem to all the returning exiles that they should assemble at Jerusalem, and that if any one did not come within three days by order of the officials and the elders, all his property should be forfeited, and he himself banned from the congregation of the exiles. Then all the men of Judah and Benjamin assembled at Jerusalem within three days. It was the ninth hour on the twentieth day of the month, and all the people sat in the open square before the house of God, trembling because of this matter and because of the heavy rain. And Ezra the priest stood up and said to them, You have broken faith and married foreign women, and so increased the guilt of Israel. Now then, make confession to the Lord, the God of your fathers, and do his will. Separate yourselves from the peoples of the land and from the foreign wives. Then all the assembly answered with a loud voice, It is so. We must do as you have said. But the people are many, and it is a time of heavy rain. We cannot stand in the open. Nor is this a task for one day or for two, for we have greatly transgressed in this matter. Let our officials stand for the whole assembly. Let all in our cities who have taken foreign wives come at appointed times, and with them the elders and judges of every city, until the fierce wrath of our God over this matter is turned away from us. Only Jonathan the son of Ashael and Jah Zeal, uh, the son of Tikva, opposed this, and Meshullam and Shabbatai, the Levites, supported them. Then the returned exiles did so. As for the priests, selected men, heads of fathers' houses, according to their fathers' houses, each of them designated by name. On the first day of the tenth month, they sat down to examine the matter. And by the first day of the first month they had come to the end of all the men who had married foreign women. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The word of the Lord is found recorded in the Acts of the Apostles, the 24th chapter, beginning at the 10th verse. And when the governor had nodded to him to speak, Paul replied, Knowing that for many years you have been a judge over this nation, I cheerfully make my defense. You can verify that it is not more than twelve days since I went up to worship in Jerusalem, 
and they did not find me disputing with anyone or stirring up a crowd, either in the temple or in the synagogues or in the city. Neither can they prove to you what they now bring up against me. But this I confess to you, that according to the way which they call a sect, I worship the God of our fathers, believing everything laid down by the law and written in the prophets, having a hope in God, which these men themselves accept, that, they will be a, that there will be a resurrection of both the just and the unjust. So I always take pains to have a clear conscience toward both God and man. Now, after several years, I came to bring alms to my nation and to present offerings. While I was doing this, they found me purified in the temple without any crowd or tumult. But some Jews from Asia, they ought to be here before you to make an accusation, should they have anything against me. Or else let these men themselves say what wrongdoings they found when I stood before the council, other than this one thing that I cried out while standing among them. It is with respect to the resurrection of the dead that I am on trial before you this day. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel is found recorded in the Gospel of St. Luke, the 14th chapter, beginning at the 12th verse. Jesus said also to the man who had invited him, When you give a dinner or a banquet, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors, lest they also invite you in return and you be repaid. But when you ha give a feast, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed, because they cannot repay you. You will be repaid at the resurrection of the just. When one of those who reclined at table with him heard these things, he said to him, Blessed is everyone who will eat bread in the kingdom of God. And he said to him, A man once gave a great banquet and invited many. And at the time for the banquet he sent his servants to say to those who had been invited, Come, for everything is now ready. But they all alike began to make excuses. The first said to him, I have bought a field, and I must go out and see it. Please have me excused. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I go to examine them. Please have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So the servant came and reported these things to his master. Then the master of the house became angry and said to his servant, Go out quickly to the streets and the lanes of the city, and bring in the poor and crippled and blind and lame. And the servant said, Sir, what you commanded has been done, and still there is room. And the master said to the servant, Go out to the highways and hedges, and compel people to come in, that my house may be filled. For I tell you, none of those men who were invited shall taste my banquet. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A devotion based on this Old Testament lesson. Now Ezra himself was clearly a type of the Lord's Savior too, inasmuch as he restored sacred scripture, recalled the people out from captivity to Jerusalem, enriched the Lord's house with greater gifts, appointed leaders and guardians beyond the river Euphrates who were familiar with God's law, and purified the descendants of the exiles from their foreign wives. For the Lord restored sacred scripture, because... When the scribes and the Pharisees either had defiled it by their traditions, or taught that it should be understood according to the letter alone, he showed it was full of spiritual meaning, according to, as to whether it was written by Moses or by the prophets. And by sending the Holy Spirit on them, he also caused the New Testament to be written down by apostles and apostolic men. He led the people out from captivity in Babylonia and brought them, now liberated, to Jerusalem and the Promised Land, not only because, by suffering on that one occasion on the cross, he redeemed the world through his own blood, and descending into hell he rescued the true Israelites, that is, the elect, he found there, and, leading them to the walls of the heavenly city, granted them the joys of inheritance, 
they had once been promised, but also because daily gathering the fruitful, uh, faithful from the turmoil of this world, he calls them together to the fellowship of the Holy Church and the eternal kingdom. He increases the riches of the temple with gold and silver and precious vessels that either the people of Israel or rulers of the Persians had sent there through him, because by bringing there those who believe in him from both peoples, that is, Jews and Gentiles, into the church, he does not cease to adorn and glorify her always through the splendor of their faith and good works. He appointed leaders and guardians for all the people beyond the river who knew and taught God's law because in the holy church, which is not, which not only has been cleansed in the river of sacred baptism, but also by the sincerity of its faith, he transcended the Babylonian waters, that is, the turmoil of his change, this changing world. He placed apostles, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. He purified the descendants of the exiles from their foreign wives because he forbade that those who, by professing the faith, had renounced the world, should be enslaved any more to the enticements of the world. He also cast out the children of these mothers from the assembly of the returned exiles in case, by chance, when they grew up they might follow the faithlessness of their mothers rather than the faith of their fathers because he taught that even those of our those of our works that seem good to people are spurious if they are mixed with carnal pleasure or originate from the contagion of human favor and so are not worthy of the fellowship of those who completely renouncing the world with their whole mind move on to the things of heaven and who rejoice not to be weakened by temporal enticements, but on the contrary, to be made stronger through adversities and to be prepared by them for their heavenly rest. We confess together our common and saving faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. 
Thanks be to God.